Have you come prepared for the text we are going to deal today? Yes. Yes. It's all about Silent Spring. Written by an American writer, Rachel Carson, in 1962. Well, the existing ecological problem is undoubtedly one of the consequences of globalization. The world is facing ecological problem due to the thoughtlessness, lack of sensitivity, and irresponsible behavior of many people towards the creator and creation. Gradually, this ecological problem is turning into an ecological disaster. In order to prevent it, we need to introspect, we need to reflect, we need to read this kind of text written by popular environmental writers so that we may bring some kind of changes in our day to day life by practicing environmentalism. We have in India many environmental writers like Vandana Shiva, Arundhati Roy, Ramchandra Guha, etc. For example, Vandana Shiva participated in Chikko movement. She hugged 300 trees, protecting the trees not to be cut off. She protected the forest and it was the strongest movement taken place on this face of the earth. Apart from that, we have Arundhati Roy. She has written a beautiful text, God of Small Things, and the another text, End of Imagination, it is an essay. And she writes, My world is moaning, it is moaning and moaning. She writes in a moaning manner in order to tell the dangers of nuclear weapon. So you should understand how important it is to understand what exactly this environmental problem are. It is not a mere problem of a pollution or we call it so called, uh, call it as a water pollution and all that. It is a problem of science and technology, over usage of science and technology by mankind. You just look at the modern world, look at our ancient forefathers how they live and how they practice natural way of living. But today the world has entirely changed. I think that if you read this text, at the end of the text, you will realize the pain this American writer Rachel Carson underwent to enlighten people about the dangers of pesticides and chemical, of course, and apart from the environmental disaster which are prevailing in our daily life. Before I could begin with the text, I would like to present before you a small poem, a composition. Just put forth my composition and make you feel the beauty of environment through this poem. This poem is all about eco-spirituality. Look at the sun and see how brightly it shines. Share it equally its light with everyone all the time. Feel the gentle breeze swiftly whispering all around, spreading its wings and enveloping the beautiful ground. Listen to the pitpat sound of the drop of rain falling on the sea in due season to produce the grain. Every phenomenon in creation is a gratuitous gift. Every person has an equal right from it to benefit. Eco-spirituality has no barriers and discrimination. It breaks all fetters and leads to good inclination. It provides new posts and foundations in the pursuits of justice. To be kind and respectful to Mother Earth and to strive for peace. Reconnecting to nature and rediscovering one's love for the earth can bring awakening and fill one's life with laughter and mirth. Living by good spirituality will fill one's life with wonder and grace, cause it has neither caste nor creed and can give us fully comfort and solace. So this is a small poem, of course it is a rhythmic, rhythmic poem, but it tries to highlight the beauty of the nature. What all the nature gives, gives to us? Great writers, romantic writers like Keats, Byron, Shelley, sat in the nature, introspected on the nature. They enjoyed the beauty of the nature. They wrote all about the nature. But we, we don't have any time. That's why William Wordsworth beautifully said, Life is full of worries and cares. We have no time to 
stand or sit and stay. So my dear friends, after reading this beautiful lesson, we should be able to understand how this writer Rachel Carson has brought an awareness to all of us with regard to environment. So now I ask you to quietly open your textbook and read in silence the first paragraph of the text. It is better we all reflect together and I would suggest let us voice out our feelings. Just look at the phrases, look at the beautiful vocabulary she has used and of course this text is segregated into three to four parts. In the first part she has mentioned about the beauty of the nature, a town existing in the counterparts of America, the beautiful town with all the glory of the nature and the second part the deteriorating part of the nature where the nature undergoes a lot of trouble, a lot of uh, peacelessness, a lot of disharmony etc. So please try to read in silence and voice out your feelings. <laughs> 